Hello, Christian Bravery here. Uh, so I made this painting a little while ago and uh, posted it on Reddit and got quite a lot of uh, reaction. A lot of people were interested in it. And luckily, I recorded the whole process of uh, creating this image. So um, I thought I'd put a little video together just to walk you guys through the process from start to finish. Um, kind of just to prove that it's not a photo bash as much as anything because a lot of people on Reddit seem to think that it was just a painted over photo so uh, there was a lot of argument going on some people saying no it's clearly painted other people now it's been photo munged in some way cleverly so here we go Look, you can see the um, line drawing going in there um, yeah so just using the old, old school technique you know grid out the the um, the canvas as it were just to uh, divide it into nine just to help with uh, drawing up the lines there you know that's useful technique you can use uh, basically the the reference image on the on the right hand side there I just just literally just took a photograph with my phone of stuff on my desk but stood up that lighter in the foreground to you know give give it a sort of focal point um, not a lot of thought went into setting that up I just sort of kind of the lighter was like a kind of cool um, like a cool object because of the translucency and the colours and the reflective parts of the metal and that. I thought, I thought it was quite an interesting, quite a beautiful object really for a mundane thing. It's kind of it's quite beautiful. So I thought it'd be a kind of cool thing to paint. And a lot of people think that painting something like that would be like really super difficult. So I kind of wanted to show that actually, you know, if you approach it in the right way, you can literally paint anything and it's, it's not even that hard, you know. So, uh, so the line drawing has gone in now, we can see that, and um, just switching over to colour. So, uh, the line drawing will be on a multiply layer, which sits on top of the image for the, uh, the whole process, using Photoshop here, obviously. So, painting on different layers underneath that uh, top layer, so you always, you've always got the guides, guidelines of the actual original drawing to just to follow when painting. Although, I don't tend to be, you know, super tight with... Uh, not going over the lines and such, if, unless I'm using like a lasso tool, like which, which I tend to use quite a bit for doing like the later stages where you're trying to pick out a more, more of a sharp object, like the near ground stuff. The background stuff, as you can see in the photograph on the right hand side there is um, like out of focus, kind of a bit blurry, yeah? So uh, there's no need to retain hard edges there, in fact, if you were to try and retain hard edges there, you, you wouldn't be faithful to the look of the image, so you're better off being a bit more loose. So, uh, just in case you're thinking I'm color picking, I'm not color picking that. The, um, the image, the photograph, the reference photograph on the right hand side is actually in a different viewer. It's not actually in Photoshop right now, it's just the edge, you can see the edge of the Photoshop uh, window, just separating the two sides of the screen there. Um, so I'm not I'm not color picking from the photo, which is a I'm not going to say cheat technique because I mean there's no cheating really. You know you can do whatever you like as long as the final image you end up with is is yours and not just a straight rip of someone else's. Um, but you kind of lose a certain dynamic feel if you just color pick from a photo. It's, it's less your own thing, I think, and it's, it's nicer to sort of just make your own guesstimates of the colours. You know, look at them and get as close as you can, but there will be slight differences, and, um, and that's cool. That, that's kind of makes it yours, right? So uh, I think it's quite important to, in, in, in terms of training as well, to um, not just pick colours, because you're not thinking if you're just doing that, you're just like, okay, dot, dot. Use the eye, eye, eye dropper tool, pick the color, and paint it on in that place. And it's a bit like painting by numbers. You're not learning anything. You know, you're just like robotically copying it in a really, really uninvolving way. Whereas when you're looking and you're eyeballing the colors and picking them, when I say colors and colors and values, obviously, um, you're more involved and you're also also learning. Kind of getting a greater understanding of the color and value relationships so it's kind of a, a, a cool um practice to get into i think i would encourage everyone to avoid color picking at all costs it's just not good form yeah so 
just not trying to be too careful, just trying to get the colors and the values right. And, but the, the actual application of the paint, digital paint, is quite rough, you know, quite loose. Um, and, and, that, and that is fitting for this kind of sketch. And, um, you know, if you try and go too tight, like I say, especially in the background, any area which is blurred out in the reference, if you try and go too tight, you end up actually making it look less real. And uh, with this kind of exercise, I guess, you know, we're not trying to go for photo real, but we're going for impressionistic real. So it looks real from a distance. When you zoom in close, you're getting close, out of a close look at it. And uh, you can see that it's clearly a painting. Um, so yeah, going, the, the keyboard going on here, you know, you might think that's a complicated thing to paint, you know, but if you do it in stages, it's super easy, yeah. So just like looking and making and making yourself see it properly, you can see that the reflected light from the really bright window in the background is streaking down across the keys of the keyboard. So I'll just sort of drag that in real quick with a texture brush, keeping it to the areas where it's actually the light is falling on the on the keys and the areas of shade, just leaving those the background colour and um, then lining in the uh, gaps between the keys afterwards and you know that was super simple pretty quick and you can see it's quite effective yeah i think i'm just at this point giving it a little bit of blur just to blur out the background a little bit more before i go in and paint the uh, the lighter so yeah again you know a lot of people think that's like a really complicated to achieve the, the look of that lighter but as you'll see in the next couple of minutes uh, it's just a matter of looking at the uh, object not even being like super accurate you can see that already the, the colors I'm using are slightly different to the colors in the actual photograph but we don't care you, unless you're looking at a demo like this you're not going to be seeing the photograph and the painting side by side really so so there's, there's no real need for it to be like mentally accurate you know like super tight the important thing is to Get the relationships of the values and the colors right and just just look closely and see where all those little highlights are and um, little shadows and such uh, variations in tone that indicate the form and the shape as it recedes away around the grazing edge the curves that kind of thing um, and not thinking too hard oh metal looks like this metal looks like that just look at what look at what's there in the reference in front of you and, and emulate that you know that really warm reflection is probably coming from the door behind me I guess um, like a wooden door it's quite a warm kind of color coming across there um, yeah so the, the little paper label on the side going in there uh, no need to like try to meticulously copy the actual writing just an impression uh, impressionistic uh, treatment just some kind of textural past that looks vaguely like writing is enough for this kind of impressionistic look. Um, yeah, getting close to the end now, as you can see, just sharpening it up in the foreground, bit of a sharpen filter, just a few finishing touches here going in, a bit of shadow under that mat on the desk, and yeah, we're pretty much done. So there you go. Um, Christian Bravery. You can find my work leadinglightdesign.com or my personal stuff at christianbravery.art and also I'm on Art Station, Christian Bravery again. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter, The Brave, or oh yeah, I forgot Instagram, Christian Bravery. Hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I'll hopefully be uploading some more videos soon. Um, yeah, there you go. Have a good day.